Hello and welcome to this particle tutorial. And as you might know, the reactor particles from Blender 2.4 have been gone for quite a while and apparently they will stay off Blender for a little while longer. So we figure out a workaround to have particles emit particles anyways. And we used it to, con to create some fireworks. And we actually had a lot of fun with that. We just kept sending each other the latest versions of the rockets and now we've decided to share four of these versions with you. Before we get started I'd like to start with the accelerator. That's just what I'll call it. This is the basically the one that's glowing and emitting the sparks and lifting the rocket into the air. And I'll just insert a cone for that. Shift A, mesh cone. Push this down and delete this vertex. If you're already in B mesh, you'll have to delete the entire face. Then in edit mode, push everything up. So just that the origin here is in the middle, roughly doesn't matter if it's perfectly in the middle, but it should be somewhat close to the middle just for convenience, no real necessity. And now let's add a particle system. And if we were to play this back now, you can see the particles are bouncing up a little and then they're dropping. And since all the physics we have in the scene are coming from the particles and fireworks particles tend to be hot and not very heavy so they don't sink very fast. So let's just lower the scene gravity to minus two and that should take care of our uh, too strong gravity problem. And now you can see they're bouncing in the air much higher but this is supposed to go up in the air and leave the particles behind as a trail. So go into edit mode, select everything, press Ctrl F and flip the normals. And this way the particles will shoot out to the bottom, which is a lot better. And now let's uh, increase this a little so we have more space. Change this to graph editor and on frame number one, press I location and then get, go to frame number 70. This is arbitrary value. You can choose whatever you want. And I found that six blender units seem to be fine. So I'll just type in six up here and press I to have another location keyframe. And then if I play it back, you can see this thing is accelerating, but it's also decelerating once it reaches the six or once it gets close to six. And there's actually two ways of um, making this a more continuously accelerating motion. Let me just delete those two channels because we don't need them. One would be to just grab this handle, move it down and make a, make the curve a shape like this. And this way it'll start slow and then accelerate. I have found online Godfrey showed me. Another way, you can just uh, select both these handles, press S and 0, so they're scaled to 0. And then you can choose this handle, press G and X, and move it over here. And this actually gives you a fairly realistic curve as well. You can see if this is too steep for you, or the beginning is not steep enough, you can always move this to the left by pressing G and X. Okay. So the fireworks display that we're going to do will be parented to this and then it will actually explode at frame 70 or 80, whatever you choose. But we'll be creating the particle systems from the first frame because that's just so much easier for testing purposes. You can just add 70 to all the numbers I put in there if you want to or you can just go at the end. And the entire timing, the uh, timing for the entire display of fireworks will be covered in the next tutorial by Gottfried when he's exporting those to the VSE, so the video sequence editor of Blender. So let's quickly have a look at the materials, or at the particle settings I should say. This, um, this stream of particles is way too long, so we need to decrease the lifetime of this quite a bit. So let's say 15. It looks about right. And also we're only covering 70 frames, so 70 frames is enough. And they should shoot out quite fast, so let's increase that to 2. And instead of halos, I'd like to choose lines, because halos don't get seen by the motion blur. Lines do, but still it doesn't matter that much. But the lines already look like they're having a motion blur on them, so I'll choose lines here. And let's not render the emitter. And since this is the sort of isolated part of the tutorial, let's give this a material already. The other materials will be reviewed in the end. So give this a orangey material and we're not going to use any lights in the scenes. 
because all that stuff is self-illuminating but the lines don't support halo materials you'll actually need a solid material for those so just increase the emit up to 2 and uh, decrease the alpha so you can also choose this to be a wire so you have a bit, a little bit more preview on what this will do once it's a line so of course you'll have to check transparency and then lower the alpha like so okay that should do fine already and you can see they might have to spread out a little more so what I'll do is I'll just uh, take this upmost vertex and push it down just a bit and now this they're spreading around Let's just get some nor some randomness going, yeah, because in reality they would actually be quite random. So, just boost this up a little and increase the Brownian. Brownian motion is the uh, diffusion motion of smallest particles in real life, and of course in this one it works on all the particles. Now just go down to the render settings and decrease the line size. And the line has actually two sizes. One is the head, this is basically where the line ends. And this is the back. So if we decrease the back, that will um, shorten the line. And if we increase the head, that would increase the size of the line, of course, but it's not too realistic. So if you want the lines to have a straight motion, you should lower the back and don't increase the head. Okay, so this looks all right. So let's just move this to layer we'll have it on another layer later on we don't need that much space here anymore and we can start with the next emitter so let's get to the first rocket and uh, shift a to add an icosphere and press f6 and increase the number of counts here to four because we want some faces to work with then press S and scale this down and now add a particle system. You can see I split my viewport here because if you work with material and textures I like to have the materials here and textures here. If you work with particle systems, mm, several of them, I like to have the two particle systems or more here so I can select them and the particle systems over here because once you add this, this li list of options can get pretty large. So now that we have a particle system, we can see that it is emitting particles, of course. And if I now go into these options, I can add an explode modifier. And an explode modifier will assign faces to each particle. And once the particle escapes or is being emitted, it will take the face with it, making the mesh seem to explode. And the explode modifier will use the particle that is right above it for the transformation of the faces. And of course this is not how fireworks explodes. So let's get back to the particle settings over here and increase the or decrease the time over which they're being emitted. So if I turn this down to two, these particles will all be emitted in the span of two frames. And if we go back into the uh, explode modifier settings, we can uncheck dead because we're not going to render this emitter, we're only going to render the particle systems on it. So the explode modifier is only to distort the faces and we don't need the dead faces to be shown in the viewport because that's just uh, unnecessary and it will make us lose our overview. Now let's add, go back to the first frame, and add a second particle system and you can see the particles are being emitted from the faces. And since in the modifier stack, this is the first particle system, which is driving the explode modifier. And after the explode modifier has been calculated, the second particle system will come into place. And you can see right here, it's emitting from the faces. Meaning, if we distort the faces, the, fa the new particles will be emitted from wherever the faces are. And if I now go to, let's say, frame 15, I'll start this at 15, I'll end this at 17, and I'll decrease the lifespan of this to, let's say, 10. Then I'll just go back into the first emitter system and decrease their lifespan to 15. Let's see what happens. And you can see, first of all, these are expanding. And then uh, what happens here is the faces die. If 
we are, if we check that, you can see they're still there. But right before they die, they emit another type of particles. Now let's just give these two particle systems some settings that make a little more sense. For example, 15 frames is actually pretty short. I'd like this to be closer to one minute. And also I'd like to increase the randomness because it won't make everything look so static. And let's also increase the normal speed because we want this to be an explosion and not just a little poof. So five. And since these particles are supposed to sort of draw lines behind them, we could of course increase the number of particles and hope that they are actually close enough together. But there's a problem with that. First of all, we need a lot of particles. And second, it's hard to get them in a line. And third of all, there is a trail count. So we don't need to. All we need to do is increase this trail count and decrease the length until it looks somewhat like a firework. And I think we should decrease the length a lot, like so. And the trail count can be as high as you want, but just remember if you go too low, you can see the individual particles. And this is definitely not what I want. Okay, this looks about right. Let's continue this. And we can see that the, after this explosion, the other particles get born. So let's have a look at those. You can see I can switch here and still have these settings of this. And let's see why they are being born right in the middle. The reason, of course, why they're not born at the end is they are born before the other particles stop moving. So let's check. A lifetime of 24 and end of 2. So we'll have to start at 25 here and 26 to end. And careful, it's changed my number that I typed in to 17 because the start frame cannot be later than the end frame. So we'll have to do that again. And a lifetime of 15 should be fine, but I'd like some a lot of randomness here because I want this to sort of glitter. All we need now is a little more randomness. For example, I can decrease the normal speed to minus one because this option worked best in my tests and now increase the randomness to 0.5 and we should be good with this particle system. So let's head on over to the second one. And with this emitter, smallest variation can actually produce very different results. So let's start and stay as close to the values that I've already found out in my test file. And press Shift A, create an icosphere, and press S, and then 0.323, which is the scale that I use in the other op project. And tab to get into edit mode, deselect everything, control tab to select faces, and of course you can also press this button here to pr press space and type in random until you see select random and now reduce this to let's say now it's back at vertices again reduce this to 30 something percent something like this and press w and subdivide and now go to vertices and just move some of them around so we get some randomness with our sphere Okay, that should do. Now let's uh, add the same procedure as last time, particle system, explode modifier, and particle system again. And the first particle system, this is something I haven't done with the other particle system, but we should go back and do that. Go into edit mode and select everything. And up here you see the number of faces that we created. And it is usually a good idea to copy this number and put it in here. It's uh, it's no broken leg if you don't, but it's a good habit to use that. Unless you want your mesh to explode into more pieces than you have faces. But then you'll have to check cut edges over here. And since we don't render the emitter anyways, we don't have to do that. And um, of course, again, I want this explosion to be more rapid. So over the course of three or four frames, I want this thing to explode. And a lifetime of 50 this time is actually quite fine. The method of how I got these swirlies was I used the faces here, 
that are being um, calculated or are being displaced by the particle system I just let them rotate and give the other particle system an initial speed meaning that the faces in every frame would shoot particles into another random direction so let's uh, change the values here I want an emitter geometry of 2 meaning the normal speed of 2 and I want some rotation randomness 0.3 and I want an initial spin of these of 9. So if you have a look at this, you can see the faces are spinning nicely. So let's have a look at the other particle system. This one has to have a bit more speed than the standard setting. And also it should start right after the first particle system. So let's check frame number 3. And it should emit over the entire duration. So that's 50 frames and a lifetime of 50 here is also fine but we should change the number of particles to 100,000 so just add two zeros here and let's have a look at how that looks and you can see we've got some nice swirlies going on already but if we have a look at this more closely you can see that there are actually patches of particles being distributed. This is not a straight line. So let's have a look at this one. There's uh, the most obvious one, I guess, over here. And this is due to the calculation of the modifier in the particle system. So for example, at a given frame, let's call this frame 10, the face emitting the particles is right here. And at frame 11, the face is here. And at once a frame, it will emit a patch of particles like this and this and this. And if you were to, or if you wanted it to have a straight line here, you would have to increase these subframes. Subframes means that Blender will check where this face is several times per frame, and thus resulting in a lot nicer stream of particles. The problem is, if we increase the subframes here, it still won't work. And that is because the explode modifier does not support subframe, meaning that Blender will check with his face is five times a frame, but the face will be at the same place five times a frame. So it doesn't make any difference because of the combination of particles and explode modifier. And this is something I was promised that will work in the future. The modifiers are supposed to support the subframe settings as well. And we came up with a few ideas of how to circumvent this problem, but none of them were perfect. So I'm just going to mention them and not show them to you because they didn't work that well anyways. The first idea was to create child particles that sort of clump around this patch and this patch and thereby overlapping and sort of closing those gaps. But that turned out to be very hard to control. And in the end, we just had bigger clump of patches. Second idea we had was to increase the frame rate so drastically that actually the uh, speed of this would be slow enough so two patches would actually overlap but that would be ridiculous and also a ridiculous amount of calculation. For example we'd have to increase the frames per second to 1000 and then play it back 40 times faster and that's just uh, not worth it. Another idea that we had was to have these particles emit backwards with a random speed. So they would sort of uh, close those gaps, but that didn't work at all. We couldn't predict any of the results. So in the end, we decided let's wait for reactor particles and make a second tutorial then. Now let's get to particle system number three. And again, add an icosphere and scale it down pretty small, like so. And this time we'll add two particle systems and then the explode modifier and then a third particle system. And this particle system will be the visible explosion. We only need 300 particles for that start and end very close together and the lifetime also very short. That's it already. This particle system will be the actual explosion, but it's going to be invisible. So this is the simulated explosion. This is the one that actually distorts the faces. And this is the one that's visible again. So um, we have 80 faces. So let's take 
AD vertices start at 1, end at 3, and a lifetime of 50 should be fine. The emitted geometry, all of this we can actually leave, but I'm not entirely sure why that was, but I had better result if I chose object Y as the rotation axis and set the face back to 0.37. And since we're not supposed to see those, we're going to check none under render. Third particle system, we don't need a thousand, we can do with 500 particles. And I do want them to start after an arbitrary number of frames after particle system number two. And I initially had 50 frames, but that is very long. So in the end, I chose 30. So set the start time to 30 and the end time to 35. And this lifetime boost shouldn't be as long. One second is plenty, so 25 frames. And I want this explosion to be fairly violent, so four. But if we have an explosion this strong, we need some damping. And a damping of 10%, so 0.1, is already pretty much. So you wanna, we now get a very violent explosion, but they're also starting to slow down very fast. Now let's have a look at some other settings to make this look more random, because right now it's not possible to have a particle explode into all directions. So we'll have to fake that. I tried to add a solidify modifier in between the explode modifier and the second particle system, because I was hoping this way I have three and a back face, four more faces per triangle, and four more faces or four more directions of normals that particles can be emitted from. But that didn't work. Blender does not take modifiers into account that are adding geometry. So for example, solidify modifier, array modifier, all these, they are not taken into account by the particle systems. You'd actually have to hit apply in order for this to work. But the problem is if we apply the solidify modifier before we have the explosion going on, the individual faces of the solidified object will now also explode independently from each other. So next problem right there. So if we want to increase the amount of randomness, what we have to do is change some of these random values. For example, I want a rotation of one and I want an object velocity of minus one. And that will cause some of the particles to emit backwards from the faces. Also change the randomness to 100%, 1.0. Let's play this back. You can see now the particles, the secondary ones are emitted. And let's give them a trail so we can distinguish them a lot better. Decrease the length of this, like so. And these look pretty random already but they're all sort of pointing downwards. And one easy solution to that is change the Z to 0.2. This is uh, the local Z axis of this object. But since we didn't rotate it, the local and the global axis are the same. You can check that by switching to local axis here. And that didn't change anything, so same thing. So 0.2 should pull all those particles up a little bit in theory. But this is, uh, I'd say this is random enough and very important, or not very important, but for overview's sake, uncheck dead. So let's have a look at the materials. So let's have a look at the materials. For that I'm going back to layer one and go back in the timeline and select this emitter. And this emitter has two different particles, of course, since this has two different particle systems and so it needs two materials. So add two material slots and press plus. We want this to be a halo and we also want this to have a texture. But first of all, we need to uncheck emitter in all the particle systems and also in the second particle system, we'll have to check material number two. And this is of course referring to those slots here. This is material number one, this is material number two. And since uh, these are trails from system number one, which is this material, we need trails. And the only way to color trails or give them individual colors or a color over across the entire trail is by using a blend texture. So let's check blend over here. 
and now we can choose the colors from over here but we'll have to check that we want uh, the trails to be colored and that is not very intuitively solved in blender but it doesn't matter once you know how it's done it's working fine so first of all you need the coordinates to be strand particles and then you need the progress to be vertical a horizontal progress with this input will mean that this color here represents the birth time of the particle and this represents the death time and the colors that you choose are everything in between this is going to be interpolated if you choose a vertical this will be the beginning of your trail yes and this will be the end color of your trail so I'll move this in the middle and add a new one and I'm going to do, go down with the alpha 100% so 0% left and make this dark orangey now do the same here except it's already at zero and I'll also make this a dark orange color this could actually be more red and the middle one I'll make a bright yellowy color and you can see now even though color is checked to be 100% can't really see this here it's color you can see that the particles or the halos here are not entirely colored and that is because if you want the color of a particle or of a halo to be determined entirely by the texture you'll have to check black base color and I'll also want the alpha to be zero but I want the alpha to be brought back by this texture and actually these colors are a little too dark for my taste so first of all check this to ease which makes the transition a little less rapid and increase the brightness of these colors and same here and increase the brightness of this a lot so this actually looks better maybe a little bit more red here and also here okay let's play this back a little so we have both the particles in the view first of all let's take a one of these longer trails they actually seem a bit short let's just uh, change this real quick and if we were to render this now these trails would be huge because a size of 0.5 is actually half a blender unit and that's way too much so let's change this down to 0.05 and let's already modify the other part the other halos as well before we give this a test render again choose halo as the emitter type and make this green again the size should be downsized a lot 0.03 should do fine and I've also given these some lines which I tinted green or colored green but only three of them and also some star tips six and since this doesn't have a texture I checked extreme alpha to increase the glow of this and one last thing to do is we have to check texture and checking texture on a halo system or on a halo material doesn't mean that the texture is now enabled the texture is enabled by this check mark here it means that the texture will now not be mapped over the entire particle system but it will be mapped over each halo individually or in this case over each trail in order to have a better preview of this let's change the world background color to black and also decrease the size of this even more 0.03 and uh, if we have a look at the particle system playback you can see that now the green particles are born and they fo form a little green lump in the middle and when I rendered this actually I didn't mind so much even though it was by accident but I can tell you why this is the case now these particles are have a lifetime of 24 frames so at frame number 25 24 plus 1 they start to decay but this starts to emit particles at frame number 24 so before this is done some of the particles are already dead and if now the other particles were to be emitted from the dead faces just by calculation blender doesn't find them and it will switch to volume instead and this is why there are some particle emitted in this volume so there's two ways of solution first of all you can decrease that but this will still result in a little bit of a lump in the middle and also I'd like to increase 
the number of particles. And this leaf seems to look all right, except for they're going inwards. Okay, let's just change that to zero. They don't need to explode at all. So if we were to render this now, you can see that we have even sort of a fake motion blur going on due to this stripe here. And we can even decrease the size a bit more. And also it's a good idea to have these particles, uh, these halo settings add to each other. And this add value means if in the picture, two of those are in the rendered picture, two of those are halos overlap, they will add to the brightness and the color of each other. So those are the settings for particle system one, let's go to layer two and have a look at those settings. All right, over here, we have two kinds of particles again, so two slots with two new materials. And this should be the first one. Those are blue, I made them blue. And those are, of course, again, halos. And the size of those can be fairly big, like 0.06. And they could have a hardness of five, so very soft. And again, add up to one, because all of this should add. And now let's create a new texture. This should be a blend texture. And this time we're going to make the progress to be spherical. You can see this creates a little circle and let's make the circle smaller and harder and change this color to be a bright blue like so maybe even brighter and now we will use this blue dot as the color of the halo and also let's check extreme alpha and remember texture means this texture will be mapped onto each halo individually and let's check material number two for this emitter. Again, halo, again, downsize this 0.02, because there are 100,000 of those. And that means they should be pretty small, but also they should add up a lot. Hardness of 50 is fine, but let's change the color to be somewhat yellowy. That should do, except for we need to choose the right colors in the material settings. And also, we'll have to uncheck emitter in both the particle systems. Uncheck emitter and give this particle color number two. And if we render this now, you can see that it's already starting to look a lot like fireworks and Gottfried will show you in the compositor how to make this look even better. So with these materials intact, let's have a look at the third emitter. It's right over here. Let's move the camera down. So layer one selected and select the particle system again. And again, add two materials. One will be this greenish pre explosion and the other one will be the streaks. So again, halo, again, greenish color, pretty bright this time size 0.3 because they're just supposed to sit on each other and add up. Actually, what I did was I took the streaks from the first layer, which are already there. I should have named them apparently. So let's just name this one and go back to layer three and change this to be those streaks. But now make sure that you are using a copy of this. So click those this little two and make a single user. Otherwise, you're actually changing the values for both the streak materials. And in particle system number one, uncheck emitter and leave this at material one particle system number two, uncheck emitter, it's not being rendered anyways. And particle system number three, uncheck emitter and give this material number two. And if we now play this back here, the streaks, let's have this looks 12. And I'd say this is a pretty decent fireworks. And with all this, I'm almost ready to make way for Gottfried's compositing and VSE tutorial in order to make the timing correct and to have this look a lot nicer. But there's just one more sort of bonbon that we found out and that I'd like to share with you. So shift A, add another icosphere and press F6 and subdivide this a lot more like five. Now go into edit mode, make sure that you have this option on and also that you are in shaded mode. Press A to deselect everything. C 
and this will give you the paint tool and now you can paint onto this icosphere if I draw a little happy face you can deselect vertices by middle mouse dragging I'm sure you can do a better job than I'm doing right now. Now you can press Ctrl I and X and choose vertices. That will only leave the face. Now if we add a particle system to that and make the normals 3, also scale this down, and again add a explosion modifier and also change the end frame to 2. If we now play this back you can see the face is exploding and actually resulting in a smiley shaped fireworks. This works with all primitives that have a regular distribution of faces and all those faces must point inwards towards the center, hypothetically. Of course the normals point in both directions in my example right now. That's it for this part of the tutorial and please join us when Gottfried continues this series and shows you how to do the timing in the VSE and some compositing also on blenderdiplom.com.